Have you ever dreamed of starting your own podcast? Well, you can. It's simple, it's easy, and best of all, it's free. By going to anchor.fm, you can start your own podcast today and have your own show up and ready to go. Anchor's graphic user interface is user friendly and you get paid for your content by setting up a Stripe account. Go to anchor.fm. Again, that's anchor.fm and start your podcast today. Welcome to the Living Healthy Podcast, where you can improve your quality of life by making solid and informed decisions. I'm your host, Eddie Randall. In tonight's podcast, I will be discussing basic immunity and good bacteria in the stomach and how it bolsters our immune system. Then I will be discussing natural and healthy foods that we can eat to improve our immune system. Uh, This podcast is entitled Promoting Immunity Through Stomach Health and Wellness. When most people think of the immune system, connotations come to mind such as having a cold, a fever, drinking orange juice, taking Tylenol, having cough drops, and getting plenty of rest under a warm blanket. Most people don't think about the stomach other than not wanting to eat anything due to a sore throat. As time progresses, people may start thinking about the stomach because the stomach plays a huge role in in the immune system. Uh, Scientists are now beginning to piece together that at least 70% of immunity can reside in the stomach. This is important because everyone wants to have the best health possible, especially in light of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Now, there are two types of immunity, humoral immunity and cellular immunity. While both are vital, uh, humoral is uh, the more important of the two. Humoral immunity is also known as antibody-mediated immunity. Now, humoral immunity responds to antigens that are pathogens that have a marker or molecule on them. Uh, The response is in the form of B lymphocytes, which are white blood cells that begin clonal expansion and secreting antibodies. Now, antibodies recognize and then destroy the antigens. Uh, The antibodies can proliferate um, in an astronomical number in order to keep up with the invading antigen. Now, when B lymphocytes recognize antigens, these antigens will have a protein on them, and the B lymphocyte is actually activated by the T helper lymphocytes. This is called T dependent. If the T lymphocyte did not respond, then the B lymphocyte would not respond, or if it did, the amount of antibodies produced would be uh, insignificant. T independent is where non protein antigens elicit a B lymphocyte response called heavy uh, chain class switching. This just means that the B lymphocyte changes the immune class from IgM, which is immunoglobulin M, uh, which is the primary antibody, to another type of antibody class. I'll be discussing humoral immunity as it relates to stomach health and why it is important. Good bacteria. Now, what exactly is good bacteria? When people think of bacteria, they think of an invisible world of germs that can cause illness and in severe cases, even death. This is 100% true. And to give you a glimpse at the world of bacteria and how vast it is, there are more bacteria in the human mouth than there are people living on the planet. According to micropia.nl, their website states that there are about 10 billion, with a B, billion bacteria in the human mouth. As a side note, micropia.nl is a website for a museum that's in Amsterdam that is completely dedicated to microorganisms. They truly are unique as they are the only museum in the world that does this. I'm not being paid to mention them. I just wanted to mention them because I love science and microbiology And the entire reason that they exist is to help explain the world of microbiology to the general public. I love sharing information and I love helping people understand. I would also love to uh, to visit Micropia one day. 
Now back to the subject. Uh, this is just a glimpse of the world of bacteria as there are good and uh, bad bacteria in and on the human body. As long as they're kept in balance, um, we will remain healthy. You know the saying, a place for everything and everything in its place? Well, that's absolutely true even in the world of science. As long as bacteria is kept in check by having equal amounts of good and bad bacteria, this will deliver the healthiest outcome. As an example, if you've ever had C. diff or known someone that had it, uh, C. diff is Clostridium difficile enterococci. Uh, it can be caused by being exposed to food uh, uh, contaminated with feces. For this subject, I will stick to the major cause of uh, C. diff, which is through antibiotic use. Now, when someone takes antibiotics to kill off bacteria that has caused an illness, an unfortunate result is that you also kill off good bacteria. And if the good bacteria is not there to balance, then the bad bacteria can become opportunistic and flourish. This is why it's good uh, that when you take a course of antibiotics as a treatment, to not only make sure that you complete the course, but also to replenish the good bacteria that has been lost to prevent further complications. I'll discuss this later on in the uh, podcast. Another example is with MRSA, or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Now, uh, Staphylococcus aureus is a normal flora of the skin and nose, but when somebody is ill, this bacteria can become opportunistic. Uh, this is um, important why we should not abuse antibiotics and also to avoid meat and dairy that contain additional antibiotics. With excess use or exposure through food, a person can build up a tolerance to common antibiotics, um, leading to many health issues, including sepsis and in some uh, more severe cases, even death. Our microbiome plays a very significant role in our daily health and it has a great deal to do with our life expectancy. Aside from genetics, environmental exposure, and products that are carcinogenic, our immune system can help determine life expectancy. Uh, our immune system, uh, with the help of good bacteria, coordinate and fight battles every day in our bodies that we are not aware of. This is in part due to the lymphocytes that remember antigens, um, which is called clonal selection. Now, this is where antigens are tagged and remembered. So in the future, if your body comes into contact with that pathogen again, your body will quickly respond and defeat it without you even knowing. Uh, think of uh, your immune system as having access to a file cabinet of problems that it's run into in the past and it keeping track of how it had defeated that enemy. Now, there is a textbook uh, named Molecular Biology of the Cell, 4th edition, uh, by Alberts, Johnson, Lewis, Raff, Roberts, and Walter. They state that if an animal is immunized with antigen A, and by animal, they also mean humans because of our taxonomy. Our kingdom is animal and we are classified as mammals. Um, so what they're saying is that if an animal is immunized with antigen A, the immune response is called a primary immune response. If in weeks, months, and years later, we come into contact with that same antigen A, the response is quicker and greater than the initial infection as the antigen has been remembered. They also state that if it is a different antigen, say antigen B, then it will be a primary response as antigen B differs from antigen A. Uh, on the CDC's website, they have a fact sheet on the human microbiome. Uh, they state that there are naturally occurring germs on our skin, in our mouths, respiratory tract, stomach, and urinary tract. If you think about it, uh, it's like wearing an invisible suit of armor that is set up to protect you. Uh, the germs are good bacteria and they help fight off pathogens, uh, cellular abnormalities, as well as cancer cells. Good bacteria in our stomach and how it helps us. Stomach bacteria is a tremendous topic to cover due to the sheer number of bacteria. Uh, for this podcast, I will talk about the most common and important bacteria. These are lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. They are actinothinous, meaning they are acquired at birth and are part of the mother's natural flora. This bacteria is crucial as it sets the child up for life in regard to immunity. Babies born vaginally get more beneficial bacteria than those who are born via C-section. 
Additionally, morbidity is associated more with children born via C-section than via vaginal birth. Uh, there is a paper published on the American Society for Microbiology's website. Uh, it's by Milani, Dranti, Bottasini, and 15 other authors. The paper is called The First Microbial Colonizers of the Human Gut, Composition, Activities, and Healthy Implications of the Infant Gut Microbiota. They state that children born via C-section uh, they have reduced stomach bacteria com uh, compared to children born vaginally. Also, they mentioned that C-section births have an increased risk of immune disorders such as asthma, allergies, type 1 diabetes, and these children are also predisposed to becoming obese. There are over 150 strains of lactobacillus bacteria, and these bacteria are, are known as protective non-pathogenic beneficial bacteria. They are anaerobic, gram-positive, rod-shaped bacteria. Uh, being anaerobic, they do not require oxygen for growth. They have a thick peptidoglycan layer that retains the violet stain when you wash the slide and look at it under the microscope. Uh, this bacteria prevents pathogens from attaching to and invading epithelial cells. Lactobacillus has a vital property and that these strains can survive the acidic environment of the stomach. This is essential in that it must live in order to get to the intestines in order to be absorbed and do their job. If the bacteria dies in the stomach acid, which is good for pathogenic bacteria, then the dead bacteria along with other waste products are removed in bowel movements. Lactobacillus acidophilus now, this bacteria makes lactic acid by breaking down carbs, which is essentially breaking down the sugar that's in milk. Uh, they help the body absorb vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. It also helps to relieve cramping and diarrhea. Uh, this bacteria is also known to support vaginal health as well as the urinary tract. Uh, lactic acid also plays a huge role in the manufacturing industry. Uh, particularly in dairy products, where it's used as a starter culture in yogurts and probiotics. Lactobacillus casei is another species that's uh, believed to support a plethora of health processes, and it's a primary producer of amylase. Amylase can help to break down food, and it's an enzyme that's found in saliva. You know the saying that uh, people use that the food looks so good it was mouth-watering? Well, this is amylase at work. Uh, it begins to proliferate in the saliva and is activated at the thought or smell of food. Uh, l casei is commonly found in probiotic drinks and in sauerkraut. Lactobacillus fermentum. Um, it's normally found in saliva and in the intestines. It works to help lower cholesterol, uh, aids in digestion, and helps to support the immune system. Um, it's also found in yogurts and other dairy products and is sold as a supplement. Um, Nutrition is the International Journal of Applied and Basic Nutritional Sciences. There's a study they published by Dr. Monica Oliveras and several other authors called Oral Intake of Lactobacillus Fermentum CEC T5716 Enhances the Effects of Influenza Vaccination. Now, their study concluded that the L-fermentum strain via supplement increases the T-cell response and bolsters immunity of individuals who receive their influenza vaccine. As time goes on, in regard to COVID-19, I'm sure there will be plenty of studies out there that will test how probiotics affect the COVID-19 vaccine. Lactobacillus bulgaricus. Now, this helps regulate the immune system by keeping bad bacteria at bay. It also works to remove heavy metals like lead from the body. Lactobacillus rhamnosus. Uh, this works as a bacterial regulator as well. Uh, when taken by mouth as a probiotic, it's believed to fight against diarrhea, Crohn's, and irritable bowel syndrome. According to cancer.gov, it limits the production of carcinogenic compounds produced by other bacteria in the stomach. Lactobacillus salivarius. Now, this lactic acid uh, can help fight bad bacteria accumulating in the mouth, and it also helps to fight bad breath. Um, it helps to lower cholesterol levels, alleviates asthma symptoms, 
And it also, it, it works against adverse liver conditions by reducing liver inflammation. The NIH website uh, has an article entitled Protective Effects of Lactobacillus salivarius, LIO1, and thioacetamide induced acute liver injury and hyperammonemia. It's by Yang, Bian, Wu, and several other authors. They determined that liver damage in mice was mitigated when L. salivarius was administered. Lactobacillus paracasei. Now this can help lower blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, and also aid in weight loss. It's used as a starter culture in uh, dairy products. It can even help to cleanse your liver and protect it from damage that occurs from taking um, acetaminophen. Lactobacillus ruteri. Now in food, it's found in cheeses and it's also found in different parts of the body. It has tremendous antimicrobial properties that can keep pathogens in check. The most interesting thing that I found out about this bacteria is that it's found in breast milk. That in itself should be an indication of how important this bacteria is. On the Frontiers in Microbiology website, Mu, Tavella, and Luo uh, wrote an article uh, called Role of Lactobacillus ruteri in Human Health and Diseases. They stated that L. ruteri is found in breast milk and it can reduce inflammation and promote T-cell development and function. The breakdown on this is that L. ruteri can fight disease and it also helps to build the immune system. Lactobacillus helveticus. Now it's commonly used in the manufacture of many cheeses. Uh, it's also one of the most popular bacteria strains and one of the most researched. In fermented milk, it can have a calming effect and it can act as an ACE inhibitor, which in turn can help to regulate a healthy blood pressure. Uh, there's a publication by Chen, Li, Zui, Kwok, Yang, Zhang, and Mengi called Characterization of Angiotensin Converting Enzyme Inhibitory Activity of Fermented Milk Produced by Lactobacillus helveticus. They identified uh, several strains of L. helveticus that displayed ACE inhibitor properties. Like L. ruteri, it can help immunity by promoting T cell development as well as fighting against cytokines. Now, this amazing bacteria can even help to fight against gastric cancer. On the NCBI website, Li, Wan, Tang, Ru, Chen, Jian, and Dong have a paper called Characterization of an anti-proliferative exopolysaccharide from Lactobacillus helveticus MB2-1. They state that L. helveticus inhibits gastric cancer cells. Bifidobacterium lactis. It's very uh, prominent in the large intestines. Uh, it bolsters immunity, uh, helps to fight against cancer cells and tumor formation. It aids in the breakdown of waste products and it helps in vitamin absorption. An added benefit to this is that it fights permeability by acting as a barrier or armor by preventing things from floating freely into the rest of the body. Streptococcus thermophilus. S. thermophilus is a prominent lactic acid bacteria used in cheeses, yogurts, and probiotics. It's vastly studied and has a huge role in immunity and also helps to aid in digestion. For example, it can help people who are lactose intolerant. Uh, there's an article in the Journal of Biological Chemistry by Roll, Yahiha, Chengdenai, and several others called The Impact of the Metabolic Activity of Streptococcus Thermophilus on the Colon Epithelium of Notabiotic Rats. They state that yogurt with S. thermophilus improves lactose digestion uh, through lactose hydro hydrolysis. Um, essentially, this is uh, taking lactose and breaking it down into monosaccharides, uh, glucose, and galactose. Uh, it can also help to prevent or mitigate kidney failure by fighting uremia. Uremia is where toxins and nitrogenous waste build up in the blood instead of being eliminated in the urine. Uh, it can also fight against viruses, funguses, and other pathogens. Um, as I've stated, um, it has a huge role in immunity. Uh, Probiotics.org states that S. thermophilus fights respiratory illnesses like pneumonia, Helicobacter pylori, and Crestridium uh, difficile. Um, 
foods that promote immunity. Now, the following are a list of foods that we can all use to improve our immune system and overall stomach health. Uh, first, I will discuss the foods um, where you can get the beneficial bacteria that I just mentioned. Then I'll talk about foods in general that can improve uh, stomach health and boost immunity. Uh, first on the list is yogurt. Yogurt contains probiotics, uh, vitamins, and live cultures that are essential for immunity and stomach health. Lactobacillus and Streptococcus are some of the bacteria that are common in yogurt, and they are a great way to uh, get your daily dose of probiotics. There are many yogurts on the market. Uh, try to get yogurts that, um, that have the, the least amount of sugar. Also look for the ones that ha um, are low fat, that use low fat milk, and also look for the ones that say uh, that they contain probiotics and or live cultures. Um, if you take antibiotics uh, to cure an infection, then I highly recommend replenishing your healthy flora with yogurts that have live active cultures. Probiotic drinks. There are an increasing amount of probiotic drinks on the market today. They're full of beneficial bacteria. Um, some are strictly a non-dairy while others are like a yogurt type drink. Uh, these are a great way uh, to get your daily dose of probiotics when you're on the go, and it's an awesome way to bolster your stomach health. Acidophilus. In addition to keeping harmful bacteria in check, acidophilus can bolster the immune system by initiating an immune response through neuron signaling. Uh, studies have shown that acidophilus helps to trigger the immune system as well as increase metabolic functions. Now, there's a paper that was published by the British Society for Immunology called Lactobacillus acidophilus induces virus immune defense genes in murine dendritic cells by a toll-like receptor 2 dependent mechanism. Uh, it's by Weiss, Rasmussen, Zenthin, and several others. Uh, they wrote that uh, the probiotic properties of acidophilus uh, initiate an immune response uh, by interacting with dendrite cells producing cytokines in response to specific antigens. Uh, now you can buy acidophilus in uh, the store, in the probiotic section, uh, particularly in health food stores. Uh, on occasion I've had this. It has a bitter taste, uh, but the benefits uh, far outweigh the taste. Uh, if the taste is a deal breaker for you, um, I've seen them um, in the store with added blueberry and strawberry flavors. Water. Now, drinking water is perhaps the simplest and most easily available product that we can consume to help immunity and uh, improve stomach health. Now, the urinary tract works in conjunction with the kidneys to help flush out pathogens from the body. The bowels work in a similar fashion. Uh, Think of it this way, you know when you pressure wash your home or rinse your car, uh, water removes dirt and debris. Uh, in the body, water pretty much does the same thing. Cells need water uh, for energy and to function and to move nutrients and waste. Water moves nutrients, vitamins, uh, minerals uh, throughout the body, which is essential for, di for digestion. Uh, water can also help with the, the waste removal uh, through bowel movements. Although bowel movements differ by individual uh, individuals, uh, it, it's common to go two to three times a day, while some people go once every two days. Um, it's important to uh, have as much water as possible in order to properly uh, remove waste. Um, that being said, water makes up 75% of feces. Uh, this waste also includes viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens. So although water is simple, it's vital to help the immune system. Um, as an uh, interesting fact, while researching this, uh, I found on the CDC website that they state that the coronavirus has been found in the stool of people who've been infected with the virus. Now this makes hand washing even more important in preventing the spread of the disease. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for supporting the podcast. The Living Healthy Podcast is listed on many platforms, including Anchor, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Bullhorn, and many others. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. 
And don't forget to check out the Living Healthy Podcast channel on YouTube. Also, if you have any questions or would like me to discuss a particular topic or you'd like to be a guest on the show, please contact me at livinghealthylivinghealthy at gmail.com. Turmeric. Not only is turmeric a great spice that adds tremendous flavor to food, it also helps stomach health by aiding in digestion. Uh, Turmeric helps the stomach absorb nutrients and vitamins, and it increases acid production, which aids in breaking down food. It can also help to reduce symptoms of Crohn's disease and IBS. It does this through a chemical that it contains called curcumin. Curcumin regulates neurotransmitters that affect the stomach. It has anti-inflammatory properties, and it's a very powerful antioxidant. The curcumin neutralizes free radicals, freeing your body of toxins that can make you feel sluggish and slow. It can also prevent uh, the formation of tumor cells. Uh, You can incorporate this into your diet by cooking with it, um, having turmeric tea with a spoonful of manuka honey. Um, You can also have it as turmeric milk. Uh, You simply warm up milk and add some turmeric and a spoonful of uh, manuka honey to taste. Lemons. Now, the vitamin C content um, is obviously an immune booster, um, and that's it. also lemons are full of antioxidants. Um, they contain pectin, which is a soluble fiber. Um, it can help to uh, decrease spikes in blood glucose levels. Uh, pectin also slows digestion, allowing your body to properly absorb minerals and nutrients, which improves health. As an added bonus, it helps cardiovascular health by reducing cholesterol. Uh, You can have lemons either by lemonade, lemon tea, and lemon water. Uh, These are three delicious ways to incorporate lemon uh, into your diet. Garlic. Now, garlic is a pungent, strong vegetable that I admit that I did not like as a child. Uh, However, as an adult, I I love garlic. Uh, Many adults do not like it due to the uh, propensity for bad breath associated with it. However, its health benefits are extremely beneficial. Uh, eating raw garlic, uh, even for a short time, as to not ruin your social life, it can do wonders for your body, like eliminating intestinal worms. It also helps to eliminate waste and aids in digestion of vitamins and nutrients. Uh, garlic uh, reduces blood pressure by creating nitric os- oxide, which in turn relaxes the blood vessels. It has properties that prevent inflammation and it fights against cancer cell growth. The American Cancer Society state that there are many studies that illustrate that an increase in garlic leads to a decrease and elimination of cancer cells. These cancers include esophageal, stomach, and colon cancer. Uh, Garlic uh, is also antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral. Garlic contains over 30 organosulfur compounds like allicin, which gives it its pungent smell. Uh, These organosulfur compounds can boost immunity. Uh, Ways to incorporate garlic into your diet is to simply eat some raw cloves of garlic. Uh, As a fun fact, uh, each uh, garlic clove uh, has about four calories in it. Um, You can uh, chase the taste uh, with some orange juice or apple juice. Uh, You can drop a few uh, cloves into your salad or slice them up and put them on on the side of a sandwich. Um, You can even cook with them. Um, However, cooking garlic can destroy some of the beneficial compounds. Uh, That being said, you can make a cup of warm garlic tea. Uh, Just be uh, careful not to boil it for too long. Cranberries. Cranberries are a very tart and delicious fruit uh, that are extremely high in antioxidants. And they are a great source of phytochemicals that can help the immune system as well as stomach health. A cup of cranberries contains 24% of the daily recommended value of vitamin C. It also um, has antibacterial and antiviral properties that fight illness. There's a paper from Oxford Academic published um, in the review journal Advances in Nutrition. The paper is called Impact of Cranberries on Gut Microbiota and Cardiometabolic Health, Proceedings of the Cranberry Health Research Conference 2015. It's by Bloomer, Basau, Kruger, and several others. They state that the properties of cranberries prevent colonization of pathogens, and it also weakens pathogens in the stomach. 
Uh, speaking of pathogens, Helicobacter pylori is a bacteria that's in the stomach that causes stomach ulcers. Cranberry juice has been shown to be effective against fighting and preventing stomach ulcers from forming. Cranberries are also a great source uh, for prebiotics uh, due to the compound xyloglucan. Uh, good bacteria can use this polysaccharide, which is a hemicellulose, to replenish themselves. Uh, this is essential in maintaining overall good stomach health. Uh, on November 5th, 2019, uh, Dr. Brad Dennis uh, published an article called Cranberries Are Good for the Gut. He stated that the uh, xyloglucans are used by good bacteria to increase uh, their production. Uh, to incorporate cranberries into your diet, you can buy fresh organic ones uh, when they're available, when, in, when they're in season. You can also opt for organic non-GMO cranberry juice in, in the bottle. Salmon. It's no secret that salmon is very nutritious and is a lean meat packed with omega-3, vitamin B3, uh, selenium, and potassium. It also contains asadanthin, uh, which gives salmon its pink color. Uh, Athazanthin uh, reduces LDL, which is the low-density lipoproteins, a.k.a. bad cholesterol. Uh, salmon is key in the immune response. Uh, even though inflammation is necessary as it triggers the immune, immune response involving macrophages and B and T lymphocytes, inflammation can become the disease when it goes unregulated and can cause things like rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, salmon can help um, the immune system by easing inflammation. Uh, in regard to stomach health, uh, salmon uh, helps uh, by making food easier to digest. Uh, this is due to the uh, B12 content, uh, as the B12 um, is vital in the aid of digestion. Uh, the omega-3 content can help to ease symptoms of conditions such as IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, as well as Crohn's disease. Uh, local fresh markets and organic supermarkets tend to have fresh salmon available. Try to get the wild-caught salmon. Uh, ginger. Uh, ginger is the go-to root for medicinal needs, uh, home remedies, and to spice up cook cooking. Uh, it's also one of my favorite spices. Uh, ginger contains anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and as, as well as, well as uh, antibacterial properties. Uh, many of these properties come from gingerol. Now, this is the chemical that gives the root its robust and pungent smell. Uh, drinking ginger tea or ginger beer can ward off colds and mitigate its uh, cold-like symptoms if you're coming down with a flu or a virus. As far as stomach health, uh, ginger has a carminative effect as it relieves gas and nausea. It removes gas and reduces abdominal pressure, which obviously results in you feeling better. Uh, this can help people who have an upset stomach, suffer from IBS, Crohn's, and even pregnant women with morning sickness. Ginger contains chemicals that stimulate digestion, which promote absorption of vitamins and nutrients. It can also reduce your chances of developing colorectal cancer by reducing inflammation. As an example, inflammation can be caused by continuous flare-ups of IBD, irritable bowel disease. Uh, ginger has properties that can limit arachidonic acid, which are signaling molecules produced when there is irritation or injury in the body. In the National Medical Journal, there's an article by Jacob Shore called Ginger May Reduce Colorectal Cancer Risk. He stated that ginger may decrease eicosanoid levels by inhibiting their proliferation from arachidonic acid. Uh, you can have a ginger beer, ginger tea, uh, you can slice up ginger and add it to rice, soup, etc. Uh, you can even add some to your favorite smoothie. Onions. Onions are nutrient-rich, vitamin-rich, and have lots of flavonoids. And they also are a, pro a prebiotic, as they contain fructooligosaccharides, uh, which increases the population of good bacteria in the stomach. Um, they also have zinc and vitamin C, and these are two well-known properties of onions that work in conjunction to boost immunity. Uh, onions can reduce your risk of developing colon cancer. They also aid the liver in detoxifying the body. Uh, onions contain inulin, uh, which is a prebiotic, and properties that aid in digestion and nutrient absorption. Uh, try to buy organic onions. Uh, you can add them to salads, sandwiches, uh, rice, soup, etc. Sauerkraut. 
Now, sauerkraut is more than a great tasting addition uh, to an organic hot dog. Uh, sauerkraut is raw, fermented cabbage, and it's packed full of nutrients that help the body and build the immune system. In particular, it has a great deal of vitamin C and iron. Uh, the fermentation process helps to create conditions advantageous to beneficial bacteria. The uh, probiotics in sauerkraut make food easier to digest. Also, symptoms from conditions like diarrhea and Crohn's disease are mitigated uh, with the use of sauerkraut. Sauerkraut also contains sulforaphane, which is a sulfur compound. Now, this compound is essential in that it disrupts the DNA of cancer cells, preventing them from forming. Uh, the U.S. Library of Medicine, uh, they have an article by Clark, Dashwood, and Ho called Multi-Targeted Prevention of Cancer by Sulforaphane. They state that cruciferous vegetables like cabbage, that they lower the risk of colon cancer and prostate cancer through its sulforaphane uh, content. Kombucha. Now, kombucha is a popular fermented drink uh, full of polyphenols and beneficial bacteria, and it's available in different flavors. Uh, it also contains lots of minerals, vitamins, antioxidants, and has anti-inflammatory properties. Now, uh, the vitamin C, B6, and B12 that are in this thing, uh, they vitalize and bolster the immune system. Uh, many people use it to detox and as part of their diet plan. Uh, there are studies out there that show that drinking kombucha helped to detox the liver. Uh, kombucha contains a lot of lactobacillus strains, uh, so it's a great source for that. Uh, many people have reported that while using it, uh, it lessened the symptoms of IBS and diarrhea. Uh, kombucha is really good for you. Uh, it's available in many organic food stores and some supermarkets are, are carrying many variety, varieties of it as well. Uh, I used to drink a lot of it. Uh, uh, the brand I used to buy changed their labeling and soon after I noticed the taste wasn't quite the same. I was very disappointed because I used to love those things. Um, so I moved, but uh, you know, I, I did move uh, to another brand and that other brand I moved to is better in my opinion. Um, that's off topic, but I just thought I would share that. Um, tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes are, are some of the more aesthetically pleasing and nutrition-packed uh, vegetables. They're full of antioxidants like lycopene and vitamins like vitamin C. Lycopene aids in cardiovascular health and can even fight some cancers. As far as vitamin C, one tomato contains 28% of the recommended daily amount of vitamin C. It also contains a flavonoid called naringenin, and naringenin reduces inflammation. Now, tomatoes act as a prebiotic and promote lactobacillus rhamnosus and bifidobacterium bifidum. The fiber in tomatoes helps the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium stick to the lining of the stomach, further promoting bacterial growth, uh, beneficial bacterial growth. Uh, you can find tomatoes everywhere. Um, I love them and recommend them in uh, the usual additions as to sandwiches, salads, and using them even to make soups. Uh, that being said, some people have acid reflux when they eat tomatoes. If you're one of those people, you may want to exclude uh, tomatoes from your diet plan. Papaya. Now, papayas are packed with iron, calcium, vitamin A, C, K, and they have many anti-inflammatory properties. Their benefits to health and the immune system go without mention. And just like tomatoes, they are a great source of lycopene. As far as stomach health, papaya contain an enzyme called papain, and it's used in medicine to treat ailments. Papain is found in pain medications as well as topical ointments. In some research studies, papain was found to break down the structure of cancer cells in their early formation. Uh, papain's fiber content helps to aid in digestion and relieve symptoms such as upset stomach, constipation, and nausea. Um, you can find papayas at organic food stores, um, but they're not as popular due to the taste, but the benefits do outweigh the taste. Um, since they may be hard to find in stores, you can opt for a a uh, papain supplement, or if you have a backyard, you can cultivate um, your own papaya tree. Manuka honey. Manuka honey is honey from New Zealand, and this is part of a multi-billion dollar industry. 
Uses from the honey uh, range from applying topically for skin allergies, burns, uh, digestive health, and soothing throat inflammation. And also just to put on food because it tastes great. Uh, Manuka honey is a great tasting honey that has antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, as well as antiviral properties. It's a great tasting way to boost your immunity. And Manuka honey is good for treating H. pylori, SIBO, which is the uh, small intestinal bacterial growth, as well as uh, acid reflux. Manuka honey can be pretty expensive due to uh, its production and what it offers. However, as I always say, I rarely question price and just look at the benefits that I can get from a product. As I hear myself say that, I now realize that marketing teams are counting on people like me. <laughs> Um, you can add uh, Manuka honey uh, to just about any tea or take a spoonful and, and just um, chase it down with some water. Uh, since it's a bit pricey, there are some things to look at when selecting a honey. First, you want to make sure that it's organic, non-GMO, and that it's from New Zealand. You want to make sure it has a K factor of 12 or higher. You want a UMF number of 10 plus or 15 plus. UMF stands for Unique Manuka Factor. And then you want to look for an MGO of 83 plus or higher. MGO stands for Methyl Glyoxyl, which is a chemical in honey. The higher the number, the better the quality of honey. The MGO corresponds to the UMF. For example, MGO 83 plus would go with UMF 5 plus and MGO 550 plus to UMF 16 plus. Uh, essentially, the higher the numbers, uh, the better the quality of honey. Moving on to bananas. Now, most people don't think of bananas when it comes to immunity or stomach health. However, they're packed full of minerals and nutrients. Uh, bananas have a lot of potassium, which are vital because aside from assisting heart function, potassium helps regulate the fluid balance in the body. Now, this is important because underlying processes need this for immunity. Uh, aside from that, one banana contains 20% of the daily recommended amount of vitamin B6. This vitamin is responsible for helping to regulate inflammation. A deficiency in this vitamin hampers the immune response, allowing a stronger expression of illness and a longer recovery time from the illness. In regard to stomach health, bananas have prebiotic properties. Vitamin B6 plays a big role by helping to digest food. Also, bananas uh, can ease symptoms of ailments like diarrhea and nausea. You can find bananas uh, everywhere. Uh, that being said, um, when you buy them, you want to look for ones that are organic. They can be a little pricey, uh, but you're dealing with uh, the ability to have less pesticide and irritants put on your food, so I would definitely uh, opt for the organic ones. Uh, beets. Now, beets are full of vitamin C, and that can help, and they can also help to detoxify the liver and the blood. They offer a plethora of antioxidants, minerals, and nutrients that work to stimulate the immune system. Uh, they're a great source for folate. Uh, one cup of beets has 35% of the daily recommended value of folate. Now, folate is extremely important in that it aids in proper cell division and is key in fetal development as well as immune function. There's an article on the National Library of Medicine's website called Folate Status and the Immune System. It's by Durr, Gallen, and Hersberg. Uh, they state that lower levels of folate are directly correlated to a slow immune response to antigens. Uh, beets are full of fiber, uh, which is ideal for digestion. Um, they improve blood flow as well as relieve uh, constipation. Uh, you can find beets at the organic supermarket and specialty food stores. And as I've stated in other podcasts, I love the taste of beets in a smoothie. There's nothing like having a uh, great tasting food that's good for you. It's a win-win situation. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of the Living Healthy Podcast. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for your support. And I will see you next time. And remember, living healthy. 
creates a better you.